This SoloCast episode is a foundations episode. It's a new concept to really help people take on some of the foundational concepts that will help improve your understanding of fitness and preparing yourself for athletic performance. So today, it's my first foundational episode, and I'm talking about using the gym to get better at being an athlete. You're listening to the Mindset Forge podcast. I'm your host, Barton Bryan. I'm an athlete, I'm a former actor and singer, and I love helping people reach their fullest potential and the mindset shifts that can come from understanding how great athletes, performing artists, show up for the stage, show up for their sport, and how we can take those concepts and be better too. But when it comes to the gym, I am not like most people. I am aware of that. When I was 12 years old, and I was looking at Muscle and Fitness Magazine and watching Arnold Schwarzenegger and Rocky movies, all I wanted to do was be in the gym. So I remember being almost 13 and counting down the days when I was going to be able to go into the weight room and join my older friends to work out with the weights at the Davis Athletic Club. So that's me. I'm a gym rat. Always have been. Always will be. Love bodybuilding. Love everything about gym culture. But that's not everybody. A lot of athletes didn't really discover the gym until their coaches made them go there or until high school. Everyone has a different relationship with the gym. And so my goal here is really to help people that are not gym rats like me understand the value of the gym so that they can be even better at the sport that they're doing outside of the gym. Now, when I say gym, I'm referring to any place that you go to work out with weights. That could be your garage. That could be an athletic club that could be a you know, gold's gym or whatever, but it's a place that you go where there's equipment and that you're going to use it to get stronger, right? Everything else is an athletic field. You might be doing sprints, plyos, all that kind of stuff. Fantastic. Great. But I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about the work in the gym to help you be stronger, more stable, more powerful for the sport that you want to do. So the gym can be a colossal waste of time and it can actually create a lot of injuries and imbalances if we do it the way so many people in the United States do it. And that is going in there, doing chest day, forgetting to do leg day, doing arms and all the vanity stuff that as guys, maybe we do that girls, you know, other body parts. But the important thing is, is like, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about vanity exercise. I'm talking about getting your body to be more athletic, to be stronger. And I'm going to use a story of a guy you might know. Guy's name is Michael Jordan. Greatest NBA basketball player of all time. It's not even a question. Sorry, I am a LeBron James fan, but it's not even close. Here's the thing about Michael Jordan. He was 6'6", so he's tall, but not that tall for the NBA standards. And he was slight. He was muscular, but he wasn't big, and he wasn't that strong. He was just incredibly explosive, incredibly driven, and he had incredible talent, discipline, will, all those things. His mindset was considered one of the strongest when it came to competitive mindset you'll ever see. Kobe Bryant maybe is a 1A to him. The thing about Michael Jordan is in the late 80s, he came across something that he was not able to overcome, and that was the Detroit Pistons, the bad boys of Detroit. You're talking about Joe Dumars, Isaiah Thomas, John Sally, Rick Mahorn, Bill Lambeer. These guys beat him up. They beat the whole Bulls team up. They put fear in the hearts of their opponents. For Michael Jordan, he couldn't go into the lane and, without getting knocked down and just put in his place. And so over the summer, he hired a trainer and he put himself to work. And he went into the gym and for the first time, he really worked on his strength and his power and his overall muscularity so that he could come back the next year and push people around. And it worked. And in 1991, the Chicago Bulls got back to the Eastern Conference Finals and took down the bad boy Pistons. And Michael Jordan was unstoppable. He was stronger. He was able to take their hits, take their fouls. And he was able to overcome and beat them. In fact, so badly that the Pistons walked off the court at the end of the game before time ran out. And it became a horrible look as the Pistons were terrible losers in that moment. But the reason Jordan was able to do that with his Chicago Bulls was because he put himself in the gym and he hired Tim Grover, one of the great athletic trainers of all time. There's books that he's written about it. He also trained Kobe. He's trained some of the great athletes of all time. And it was that training in the gym, getting stronger, doing the work, building his muscles, building his power, building his body stability, which allowed him to overcome the bad boy pistons of the 80s. So I tell that story because I want you to understand whether you're a 
soccer player, basketball player, long distance runner. Not that you're going to get knocked over in a race, <laughs> but understand that when we don't do strength training, when we don't do stability training, power training, that kind of stuff, our bodies just don't meet their potential. In fact, if you're a runner and all you do is run, at some point you plateau and some muscles start to get unbalanced. IT bands get really tight, hamstrings are tight, glutes aren't that strong, and then all of a sudden we're having injuries, we're having chronic stuff, we're having shin issues or tendonitis, but that's where we take it into the gym. We start doing core work, side planks, we do rotational stability, we work the knee joint, we work the glutes that stabilize the knee, we work the inner and outer thighs. We start to build a foundation of stability that in turn makes you a better runner, makes you a faster runner, makes you a more disciplined athlete and a stronger one at that. So I'm gonna base my advice right now on seven primal movement patterns. And one of them is gait, which means like walking, shuffling, grapevines, things like that. So we're not gonna address that. So we'll talk about the other six. So there is push, pull, squat, lunge, deadlift, and then anti-rotation. So we wanna address all of those equally when we're talking about training in the gym to become better athletes. When we're thinking about programming for the gym and thinking about how do we make ourselves into the best possible athlete, we gotta make sure that we're working our push muscles, which is our chest, our shoulders, our triceps, equally to our pull muscles, which are the whole back, plus the biceps, plus the forearms, and the rear delts. So. What we don't want to do and what is commonly done is that somebody goes to the gym and they just do chest, 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 like three days a week. And they might do a little bit of the other things, but it's so overly done to build their chest, their arms, those kind of vanity muscle groups. And what that does is it creates a lot of imbalances. And so it ends up with people with shoulder issues and posture issues. And it's just not translating to sports, specifically um, just being a better athlete. So my recommendation to you is we're going to talk about three days, a push day, a pull day, and a leg day. And so in the push day, we're going to focus on all pushing movements, working the muscles of the push movements. Same thing with pull, hitting all the pull movements. And then we're going to get to leg day. We're going to hit the squat, the lunge, the deadlift, those three big movements that make our legs stronger, more powerful, more stable, and able to do so much more when we're playing our sport or out and about in the world. So before I start talking about push day, pull day, and leg day, I do wanna say that there are many ways to do it, and I'm not giving you the end all be all, the only way. But if you're looking for a program that works, and a program that's easy to follow, and a good, easy to use concept, you're gonna to wanna to go in the gym and do three days a week. Push day, pull day, leg day. Then the rest of the week, you're spending time doing your sport getting better at the things that mean the most to your sport. So if you're playing soccer, you're learning how to dribble the soccer ball, you're learning, you're working on your kicks, you're working on you know, anything that relates to soccer specifically, maybe even some agility work out on the soccer field. But those three days are key, crucial for building a body that's stronger and it can translate better. So let's start with leg day, because I always believe that you're gonna start the week with a workout, start it with leg day, it is the hardest workout it's gonna require the most focus and discipline from you, so you may as well do it first. Earn the rest of the week. So leg day, we're really focused on three specific lifts. Squats, deadlifts, and lunges. It's that simple. Squats because, of course, they work the quads, the hamstrings, and the glutes all together, and the knee is the predominant mover, which requires the quadriceps to do most of the work. When it comes to a deadlift, it is a hip dominant movement, which really challenges the glutes and the hamstrings. So by doing deadlifts and squats, you're hitting powerful movements in two different ways. And then we always wanna have some single leg movement to do so that we're strengthening and stabilizing each leg, whether it's the knee or the hip joint, by doing one-legged work. And the best way to do that is with lunges. Lunges tax the whole upper leg but they also create stability in the ankle, the knee, the hip joint, and require some core stability too. So it's optimal for something you wanna do when you're doing your leg day. So if you can hit those three things, you're off to an amazing start. And I know there's plenty of other leg equipment at the gym. You could do a glute drive with a barbell, you could do leg extension, leg curls, those are great. 
But if you're talking about the three foundational movements of the body, lunge, squat, deadlift, get those done. You do those things once a week, progressively adding a little bit more weight, a few more reps, that kind of stuff, you're going to see significant change in the way your body stabilizes and gets power. So for push day, I'm going to go ahead and recommend dumbbell work over barbell bench press. Here's why. It's better to know that the joint of the shoulder is strong enough to handle the weight. When we do barbell, oftentimes it's easier to move the weight with bad form. That's so often where people get rotator cuff issues or pain in their shoulder, things like that, bad movement patterns. So if you start with dumbbells, slowing it down, two to three seconds down, pause, boom, one second up. Work on 12 to 15 reps of that early on. Work yourself up a little bit heavier as you're getting used to the movement patterns. That's fantastic. After that, incline at a 30 to 45 degree angle is optimal for hitting kind of upper chest and shoulders. And then finish up with some shoulder press. Sitting straight up, bringing it down slightly in front of you, and then pressing up overhead, making sure you're getting your shoulders. All, all those can be done with dumbbells. I really don't believe there's that much need to do barbell anything. Yes, if you're a CrossFit lifter, yes, if you're a power lifter, you're going to need that stuff. But honestly, as an athlete, you need each sides of your body to be independently strong. And that's why lunges are so important for legs. You've got to be able to do the same amount of weight on the left as the right. We're going to have a stronger leg. We're going to have a stronger arm. We're going to have one side that's going to be more coordinated than the other. So we've got to look at doing things independently. So using dumbbells is a great way to do that for all your push movements. So dumbbell flat bench, incline dumbbell, and then a incline shoulder press. You knock those three things out on push day, uh, you've done a lot. And you do not feel like you have to sit there and do a bunch of triceps and other stuff. Pec deck, flies, all this stuff. That's for the bodybuilders. Don't worry about it. Okay, last but not least, pull day. Okay, there's several ways to pull. So I'm going to pick four exercises here. I want some type of a row towards your stomach. So that can be a seated cable row. It can be a dumbbell row. It can be a barbell row up to your stomach, back down, using those big muscle groups in the back. You can choose there. Dumbbell, cable, barbell. There's even some good machines out there that allow you to put plates on and pull. But you want to pull to your stomach. That's a low row. Secondly would be a pull-up or some sort of pull down where you're grabbing a bar from the top and doing a vertical pull down. Okay, that's going to hit a lot of the different muscle groups that don't get hit specifically when you're rowing towards your stomach. So there's two directions, just like kind of incline and flat bench, you're going to hit the back two different ways. After you get those two, the two other exercises I want you to do are face pulls. You're going to grab a rope on a cable right about your head level and you're going to pull the rope to your head, the top of your forehead with your elbows out wide. Right? I'll drop a video on, on this. This is fantastic for making sure that you have strong upper shoulders uh, to support the push movements that you're doing on push day. People that don't do a lot of upper back work but do a lot of pushing with chest and things like that oftentimes develop too much strength in the front, not enough in their backside, and that can create overcompensations and injury. So that face pull, and then the last one is going to be a straight arm pull down or a pullover. So there's two different exercises. Straight arm pull down, you can use that same cable and just pulling straight arms down to your legs. You're using your lats. You're not trying to make it a tricep exercise, but you're making it a back exercise. The other version of that would be laying across a bench with a dumbbell and doing a pullover, which is where you bring the dumbbell back behind you, pausing and then bringing it back up using those same muscles along the ribs, the lats, the serratus, a little bit of chest and, and core because of the stability component, but lots and lots of back and great for stability. So you're hitting your back in various ways. You've got the pull towards your stomach. That's the low row. You've got the pull up slash pull down. You've got the face pull and then you've got the straight arm pull down or pull over. The four of those exercises for your back, and think about how big the back is. It's massive, so you really need all four of those. So that's push day, pull day, and leg day. You're hitting six of the seven primal movement patterns there. The last one I want to talk about, I mentioned it earlier, it's rotation and anti-rotation. So 
the important thing here is that when we're doing any sport, we're never just going straight ahead or straight to the side or straight back. There's always some sort of rotational component or balance component. And so our bodies really need to know how to rotate or not rotate and be stable. So what I want you to think about here is just incorporating at some point in those three days, a couple of movements or holds that are going to support that. One of them is a side plank. Now we everybody knows what a plank is. You're developing your core stabilizers in your stomach to protect your low back. But a side plank really helps create stability in the hips so that you don't have a lot of weakness in rotation. And when you get hit or you get knocked, or you get out of balance. So that's a great one. Side plank on either side for 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, and just really start to develop your ability to do that well. The other thing I'm going to tell you about is called a Paloff Press. This is usually done with a band or a cable. I'm going to put a link in the show notes here because it's a hard one to explain, but I'm going to try here. So let's imagine you're at a cable machine and the cable is about waist level and you pull that band right out to your chest and then you turn sideways 90 degrees and then as you're holding it there and not letting your body rotate, you're extending your arms out all the way straight in front of you, just right out from your chest. So the cable wants to pull you in a rotational way back towards where the weight is, but you're stabilizing your core and pushing the weight out and bringing it back in over and over to help develop a stability and anti-rotation. That's an awesome one to do for athletes. It will really, really help you have more balance, more stability, and integrate some of those muscles that you've been working throughout the week. So that's it. Wanted to really give you some foundational concepts that you can utilize when you're going to a gym. Obviously, for some people, they're already doing a lot at the gym, but sometimes I think, and I see this over and over, I train at Lifetime Fitness South Austin. I was just talking yesterday to a runner who's in there who's trying to get his legs stronger, and he's on the leg press. And I thought to myself, well, why is he on the leg press? Because it demands no stability, there's no balance, there's no single leg movement. He's a runner. He, what he needs most is actually single leg strength. He should be doing lunges. He should be doing single leg things. And yet he was just using machines because no one had taught him any better. That's just what he did because he probably was told those are good things to start with. So that's what I want to help you with. It's like if you're in the gym and you're trying to figure out what to do, better to do the things that are going to make you strongest, quickest by just doing primal foundational movements. That's what this whole podcast episode was about today, is is creating some foundation. What's the mindset behind it all? Take it slow, have patience, do the little things well over and over, and let the results come from the work, the consistency, and the patience. And I know you'll get there. I'm hoping this podcast episode was super valuable to you. I mean, this foundational concepts of the gym for your sport, really something that I've been thinking about as I'm talking to more and more people who listen to the podcast, who've been asking questions, and I just want to provide more value. So I'm going to be doing these foundational episodes over the next couple of months to help just fill in some of the gaps of knowledge so that you can really feel like when you're listening to an episode with a top MMA fighter or Olympic athlete or whoever, you've got all the information so that you can really level up even faster. If you need support, if you need help, do me a favor, reach out to me. All my information is in the show notes here. You can find my phone number there. Shoot me a text. I would love to support anybody who wants to get better and maybe just needs a little bit more information, especially with programming at the gym, how to do that even better. Reach out to me if you need it. And remember, our one goal is to get 1% better each and every week. So I hope you receive some information today in this podcast that helps you or maybe your kid get 1% better at showing up. Thanks for listening to the Mindset Forge podcast.